In this presentation, we will take a look at a comprehensive problem using tax software for an individual low income. We will be entering W-2 income. For more accounting information and accounting courses, visit our website at accountinginstruction.info. Here is our mock W-2 where we have the wages, we've got the withholdings, the social security wages, the Medicare wages all being the same, one, three, and five in this case, the social security tax and the Medicare tax. We're gonna enter this into the tax software. We're using Lacert here, but we could be using any type of tax software will look much the same, although the data input screens may differ. This is gonna be our test 1040, our practice problem with a single individual, no dependents at this time. In order to enter the W-2 information, we're gonna to go to the input screen, which can once again differ depending on the type of software, but the information will remain much the same. We're just gonna give it a, say, job here for our income. It's gonna have wages of 20,800. This, by the way, is a Lacert we're entering into. Uh, 921, this tax software that is this is the federal income tax withheld. Many of the software will calculate for us the social security, which we can then double check because it's usually gonna be a fixed type of amount, a fixed rate up to a certain cap. The same for the Medicare. So if we have the wages in there correctly, in this case, the wages being the same, the software will often calculate the Medicare for us, it being a flat rate. That's something that we can then check against what is actually on the W-2. So we wanna double check that those amounts are correct. However, it, it should be a double check in most software, something that will be calculated for us as long as we get the wages correct, the social security wages and the Medicare wages all correct. We're gonna go back up top now and see what happens to the forms. Also note, however, that we would need to enter the other information in terms of the federal ID number and oftentimes where the address of the employer is also information on the W-2. We're not gonna do that for the mock problem here. We're gonna just enter the numbers. We go up top to the forms then and see what happens. We see our test 1040 for 2018, single individual, that being Adam Smith. We've got the social security to the right. We have some added information not applicable for your standard deduction, including someone can claim you as a dependent, you were born before January 2nd, 1954, and we don't have a spouse, so we're not going to enter the information or, or added detail for the spouse as well. We're going to say that this is a full year health coverage. That means that we had health coverage for the full year and won't be subject to any penalties for the Affordable Care Act. If this is not checked, then we may have some information that would be related to the Affordable Care Act some payments, some added tax or penalty for it. And then we have the address. We don't have an address at this time. It would of course be here and generally would be required. We're not gonna put the address for the mock problem. We then have the dependents, no dependents at this time. Then we have the signature page. Note that the first page is basically information about the tax return and the signature page. It doesn't have any real numbers on it related to the tax calculation for the most part. We're then gonna to go to page two, which will give us a summary of the calculation of the numbers. And we could see in box one that we have wages, salaries, tips, etc. That gives us our 20,800 from the W-2. So that's where the W-2 would then go. We can also see that the first portion of the form is going to be our total income and therefore line six is gonna be the sum up of the total income. There's the 20,800 calculated here. We don't have any adjustments to income at this time, which would re be reported on a separate schedule This in 2018, Schedule 1. So any adjustments would be reported here in Schedule 1 and then pull over to 1040, back to the 1040 on page 2. And we will see that at a later time. If these two numbers are the same, then we don't have that information. You could see in this tax software, it would be then grayed out. It's not being shown, it's not being used because it's, it's not being shown because it's not being used. If I say click this item to only show the information that is being used, then it goes away. We don't have anything there. And therefore these two numbers are the same. Then we have the standard deduction or itemized deduction. We will be taking the standard deduction. Note to the right of the form, it tells us what those standard deductions are. 
12,000 single, 24,000 married filing joint. These things have changed greatly from prior years and therefore they're typically higher. We want to make sure we note what that standard deduction amount is. That also makes it a lot less likely that we will be itemizing. Then we have the taxable income, that being the 20,800 minus the 12,000, giving us the 8,800. Then we have the tax calculation. Note the tax calculation is something that we often rely on the software to do because it is a progressive tax. So we often rely on the tax software to calculate that progressive tax. So we have our tax here, subtotal on line 13. We're going to have the subtotal again on line 15. That's going to be our total tax. We get then the federal income tax withheld for the W-2, that being the 921. So that's the amount of withholding on the W-2 reported in box 2, 921 for the withholdings in our W-2. We then have an earned income calculation, and this being due to the fact that our income level is below a certain standard. So we have the earned income calculation. If we see the worksheet, we could see the calculation. This is a bit complicated of a calculation. That's because in part we need to use tables in order to look up the correct amount if we were to do this manually. And that's the reason that like the calculation of the tax itself, we often depend on the software in order to help us with looking up these tables, with looking up the actual calculation for the income tax credit. Note the calculation here. We're going to say the enter your earned income from 1040 line 1. So there's the 20800 And then we simply look up the amount on line 1 in the earned income tax table in the appendix to find the credit. Enter the credit here. If line 2 is 0, stop. Put no on form 1040 line 17A. So we basically have to look up the amount on the table here. So we'll close this back up. That's going to be our amount. Again, we're kind of determining or depending on the software oftentimes to help us out oftentimes with that because of the need to look up the tables and the ability of the software to do that well, as we are doing oftentimes with the actual calculation of the progressive income tax itself. So that gives us the 3,115 for a total of 4,036, that being the 921 plus the 311. 115 and that gives us the 4036 and that is the amount on line 18 which is to add line 16 and 17 these are going to be the total payments that we have then we calculate the amount that's going to be refunded in this case so the amount refunded would be the the 4036 minus the tax of the 883 and that's going to give us the 3153. So that's going to be the amount of the refund, the 3153. It's worthwhile to go through and actually enter this information into a tax form and read through the form as we do so, because that could really help us to kind of see how the form is being linked up and how the data input is working. So even if we're not using tax software, you can look at the tax form and actually just enter this information manually into the tax form. We'll also put this information together using an Excel worksheet, which is also another double check that it's often used or some format of it used in tax offices in order to give some more confirmation on the tax forms, given the fact that we don't have any kind of double entry accounting system to help us out here. It's all basically the numbers are, they are what they are. There's nothing really in balance, nothing really giving us that kind of double check or assurance other than the input of the, the calculations correctly. So putting it into two different kind of systems can be a little bit a format of a double check. So we'll take a look at that next time. For more accounting information and accounting courses, visit our website at accountinginstruction.info.